Again today, the second session on biblical sex was learned through Lisa Graham McMinn and Stanley J. Grenz's book, Sexuality and Holy Longing Embracing Intimacy in a Broken World. Today's lack of positive awareness of menstruation is evident in women's contempt for menstruation. The collective shame and disgust of menstruation shared by women stem from a long history of regards to femininity as inferior to masculinity. Instead of taking menstruation as a curse, women can try to understand how having menstruation and having a body to adopt and raise their children can affect the way they look at themselves and how they relate to the world with God and others. They can understand the process of production as an essential part of sex. The pro woman voice rejects justice created by a culture that considers women and everything feminine inferior, cursed, and questionable. We are the souls given the body. Menstruation ceremony blesses girls and opens up the possibility to think restrictively about all aspects of being a woman. Girls are reminded of their uniqueness as women every month. They can pay attention to this cyclical rhythm that distinguishes the days of life. She can find a way to respect her menstrual body. For example, you can dive deep inside for a few days every month to reflect on where you've been and think about where you're headed. Some women feel that their dreams are strengthened before, during, or right after menstruation. Some women feel a desire to stay in a quiet and peaceful place during a period of severe bleeding. Some people experience menstruation as a time of increased consciousness and creativity or sensitivity and insight. Women live in a physical body that menstruates every month, and women cannot separate their personalities from the body. Paying attention to the cycle that follows a woman's physical nature opens the door to potential insights and unexpected blessings. When women's social values refuse to be determined solely by their youthful appearance, We come to pay respect to older women. The faith community, which encourages older women to teach, mentor, mediate, discern, and lead, confirms the history of God who has worked among those who have gained wisdom throughout their lives. Women who feel comfortable with their bodies are less uncomfortable due to anger and doubts about their existence as women. They live and work with greater conviction and acknowledge and celebrate their future as women who change as they live with their current presence. The ceremony's purpose that confirms being a woman is to talk about the blessings and responsibilities of the existence of women, to guide the way girls think about themselves as women, and to attract girls into a larger community. Relationships between women and others are intimate relationships. Women give life, raise young people. Teach new mothers, and provide guidance and counseling to mothers with adolescent daughters. And in old age, as a person who has lived with the world's pain, he becomes a source of wisdom as a person who has witnessed a gracious God who is continually working to lead people to himself and others. Women surrounding each other at deliberately planned events to provide support calls for collective wisdom accompanying God in what benefits the new generation. The task left to women is to creatively develop ways to promote this kind of interaction within an extended family, within a church, and within a group of friends. A Christian understanding of sex must go beyond information about negative consequences. Christians should respect sex and treat it sacredly because our spiritual life is embodied in the body. We see God and understand ourselves as those who reflect God's character. Faith can help us put our gender into a more extensive and metaphysical framework. Promotion of trust given with accurate information can empower teenagers by allowing them to root their embodied lives in vivid reality. One challenge thrown at the modern church is to assert sex's theology of speaking, acknowledging, and embracing single sex. Restraining a single sex involves challenging the belief that only God, The groom, and the parent's appearance is the ultimate and complete demonstration of God's relational love. On the other hand, celibacy reflects God's comprehensive love, love for everyone. The freedom of singles to love others openly reflects God's vast and universal love. If it is a crucial dimension of sex to lead others to give vital positivity to being with others, we are sexual beings regardless of whether or not we are having sex. 
Our gender is a bigger problem than sex, and it's a more complex dimension than just wanting close friends. Sex also has to do with being attracted to something else, something we are not. Sexuality means paying attention to the opposite sex even when there is no particular attraction. When we hold hands and pray, we recognize it if the hand we have is the hand of reason. Physical attraction is a sex element that goes beyond the desire for comfortable intimacy of friendship. It causes a flame.